Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here. You should have heard that last take. It was pretty bad. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing still. But anyway, how do you lose weight when you've got thyroid disease? So this is an important thing. So many have struggled with problems from their thyroid, and it's often led to challenges with weight. You know, more weight that came on for no other reason. They were eating well, staying active, but the pounds just came on. Uh, for some people, the answer is really about getting their treatment right, you know, being on the best medicine, the best amount. If you're on synthetic thyroid, sometimes just changing to natural can be a big factor. We did a little study showing that how many calories you burn at rest can be 300 calories higher when you're on natural thyroid versus being on synthetic thyroid. So if you've not made that change, that's one to consider. It can be an easy thing that frees up a lot of fuel. That 300 calories per day that you're burning at rest, if all things are equal, that could be a pound of fat every 10 days without changing anything you do. So that's cool. The next consideration is getting the dose right. There's a big range of what normal function looks like and actually a very narrow range of how thyroid scores vary within people that don't have thyroid disease. And to me, it seems just so apparent that we want your scores to look just like they would in the healthiest populations. So getting the dose right, that can be a big factor as well. Another consideration is the health of your adrenal glands. So your thyroid makes this hormone that doesn't change throughout the day, but how your body uses the hormone is very different morning versus night, and the adrenals help with that. So cortisol helps your body take in thyroid earlier and then take in less later in the day. If you don't have a good cortisol rhythm, that won't work right and you won't get the benefit of having healthy thyroid function even if you've got your gland fixed or even if you're on a good dose. So learning about your adrenals. Cortisol is a big factor for weight and you could have too little, too much, or the wrong times and all those can work against that and this is especially true if you've got thyroid disease. What happens for many too is that they can get insulin resistant and that often goes along with cortisol rhythm problems. So insulin makes your cells pull sugar inside of them to burn them for fuel. But how much insulin we need can change based upon a lot of facets of our health. If we make a lot of insulin, we're storing everything. We store all the calories we get and we burn none of them. That's a bad deal. That means weight is stuck and energy is in the tanks. So you don't want to be insulin resistant. How do you know if you are? Well, we think about that when someone's weight is especially relevant around the waist. So we talk about waist gain as opposed to just weight gain. The weight or the fat that we get on our legs or our hips, especially for women, that's not as relevant of insulin resistance. But the weight around the waist really is. So there's a measurement called the waist to hip ratio. And it's just a tape around the belly button and a tape around the biggest point around the butt and comparing the two. <laughs> when the butt and the belly button get closer to the same size, that's showing that there's more insulin resistance. And reversing that, this is pretty cool. We thought for a long time that when someone got insulin resistance, they were kind of on a skid track heading towards diabetes and it really couldn't be changed. Even the things that would improve their health, you know, avoiding sugar, being active, wouldn't always break the cycle of the insulin resistance. But what we've learned is that if you do an intensive for six weeks, you can completely turn it off. And it's pretty amazing. It looks like something to where you've got high amounts of nutrients, but small amounts of food on a regular basis. We do a program to where we use our reset shake for breakfast and lunch, and then one good evening meal. We give details on how to set that up, but a really good evening meal, two shakes, veggie snacks if you need snacks, and just that, six weeks. And over that time frame, you can move out of insulin resistance and back into a state of being able to burn effectively again. So if you've got thyroid disease, if weight's been a struggle, it can be harder, but it can change. It totally can shift.
Make sure you're on natural thyroid if you've not given it a try already. Make sure you're getting the best amount. You're really dialed in on a perfect dosage for you. And here's the thing too, too much can block your weight loss just like too little can. So you need just the right amount. Make sure your adrenals are healthy. Not too much cortisol, not too little good healthy rhythm, make sure there's no insulin resistance. When you've got those steps corrected, weight loss can happen and it can happen at a good steady pace and you can maintain that. And the weight that you're, you're losing, that you're changing, is fuel that you're burning. So you're more energized and you're more productive from it. So it's a great thing all around. So as always, know that your health can improve. If it's not, there's a reason for it, and that reason can be fixed. <laughs> reset your life and reset your health, and I'd love to show you how. Dr. Christensen here, and we'll talk more real soon.